Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as we come together to celebrate Trinity Sunday of God as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God as the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer in our lives and for our lives. So it's a great joy to have you with us this morning. Um, you know, we New Englanders wait for the perfect day, perfect weather all year long, right? <laughs> and it seems like you can say that it's here. <laughs> At least during this past week and possibly next few weeks, hopefully. And that's like, wow, all the days that we're waiting for and dreaming of is here. And let's enjoy and get the most out of it. Um, don't work too hard in the yard. I know you, you will work in the yard a lot. But just savor it, enjoy it, because pretty soon you know what's coming. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we are reminded that if we live in God and with God, every day is a perfect day. Every day is filled with God's love and blessings for us. So even if the weather's not that good, we know that God is with us and the day is perfect. So welcome. There are some announcements in the bulletin. We have celebrations and birthdays. Um, birthday celebration. Chung Min Ong's birthday is today. I'm sure they will be here. So, you know, if you see him, say happy birthday. Stephanie, happy birthday. Where are you? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Happy birthday. And Randy Marquat and Caleb Cook, Nancy Lau, and Michelle Parker. Hey, happy birthday, Michelle. <laughs> and Anne Monahan. Happy birthday. Great to have you. Um, so that we can personally say happy birthday to, to all of you. Um, so there are several things upcoming in July. Mission trips and BBS, and you're all taking your um, sign-up registration. If you are interested in mission trip, Ken Downs is the one to contact. If you are interested in BBS, Dan Saucier is the one to contact, or any of the Sunday school teachers um, that are involved. Now let us join our hearts. Yes, Ken. Uh, I would like to say that if anyone is interested in going on a mission trip, uh, it's the sign from the 7th of July to the 12th, but you can come up for one day, two days, or however long, just to let me know when the price will be uh, distributed or whatever. <laughs> the, the amount needed. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, anything you we're not able to put out for the spring fair, and if there are any household items, clothing, um, Kenny can take it up. Um, they're all always in need of furniture too. So if we're looking for furniture. Yeah, if you have small furniture that Kenny can put in his trailer, um, please contact him. Now let us join our hearts and minds and souls as we listen to this music and prepare ourselves to encounter the living God.
Good morning. Good morning. My name is Eileen Foss. I'm the liturgist for today's service. Please stand as you are able and join in the call to worship. God, like Nicodemus, we come to you in the dark. We do not fully understand. We only love you. By your grace, we are born from you, new, over and over. Give us new life in your spirit. The world thinks we are separate, but we are one in your love, one in your spirit. In love for the world, you have given us Jesus. In love for the world, Let us sing together our hymn of praise, Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty, number 64 in your hymn. silently reflect on those times this week when we miss the opportunities to live by the gospel of Jesus Christ and share them with him to unburden ourselves.
please join me in the prayer of confession. Gentle God, you have created us by your Spirit and filled us with your gifts. You have placed within us the fruits of your good news to share with the world. But we have had that nature to ourselves. We have held on to our place. We have withheld our love. We have still your word within us. Forgive our sin. Heal our of assurance. Since we are God's children and God's spirit is in us, we are not afraid. We are free. In this way, we fulfill the purpose of our lives, glorify God, and participate in the healing of the world. Let us pass the peace of Jesus Christ with one another. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 12 through 17, found on page 919 in your Pew Bible. So then, brothers and sisters, we are obligated not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if we in fact suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. May God bless the reading of the scripture.
Good morning. So have you guys ever seen a baby? What do we know about babies? What are they like? They cry a lot. <laughs> what else? What do you know about babies? Um, they need diaper changes a lot. <laughs> Katie, what do you know about babies? They crawl. They crawl. They have to learn how to crawl, right? They can't move for a long time. And then they can kind of wiggle around and scooch around. And then they can crawl. And then they can walk. And then they run and you can never catch them. Right? What do you have to say? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do, push. They do a lot of things. They do a lot of push-ups and yoga and one more. Yes, they need, they need to learn how to eat, right? They know how to drink right away, but it takes time to learn how to eat. Everything is new. Declan. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they can't eat food without teeth, right? That you have to chew up, so. Right, they can't eat solids, so they start with liquid, and then they, move to solids and then then they become like us, right? <laughs> they can eat everything. So babies, when they're born, everything is new and everything is exciting. And so one of the stories that they're going to talk about in church today is about a man named Nicodemus who watched Jesus do all of these um, important things, especially turning water into wine. Do you remember that story when Jesus turned water into wine? We can talk about it at Sunday school too. <laughs> um, and he said, Nicodemus said to Jesus, I know you must be from God because how can you do these things if you're not from God? And Jesus said to him, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said, how can you be born when you've grown old? Right? How can we be born again? How, do you have any ideas? How can you be born? Do you have an idea? Everything, for the babies, everything was new. And so when we're born again, as Christians, everything is new, right? Katie. Do you want to think about it for a little longer? You had so many things when you were a baby. You did have silly things. So when we are born, this new birth that Jesus is talking about is being born of the Holy Spirit, and our faith is what gives us new life, okay? And we become a new creation, and all we have to do is believe in Jesus and trust God. Pretty cool, huh? So it's a different kind of birth. It's not like babies when they're born, right? <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and say our prayer, and then we're going to go on down to Sunday school. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to save us. Thank you that we can have new life and be born again. Help us remember that every day. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We are actually going down to the chapel for Sunday school today to prepare for Children's Sunday. So we're heading downstairs. Half the congregation left, <laughs> but it is good that we have so many children and youth preparing for our Children's Sunday. We're so excited. Um, let us sing together the hymn number 331, Holy Spirit, Come Confirm Us.
Gospel is from the Gospel written for us by John chapter 3 verses 1 through 17, which can be found on your Pew Bible, page 863 and 864. We will alternate in reading, so if you can find it, if you are able to read, um, that would be great. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, you know that you are a teacher who is the Son of God, but no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again above. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Let us read it together. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks to God. Gracious and loving God, help us understand your words and wisdom so that we may continue to build a strong relationship with you and others. Amen. So in America, every generation has their own challenges and strengthens. You know, the, the, I'll begin with the greatest generation, which um, went through World War II and then, you know, Great Depression and, you know, those times 
which we almost lost that generation, right? You know, um, that generation is, um, is not with us. Many of them are not with us. But that generation had this enormous challenge of keeping the world a safe and peaceful place for its citizens. And they sacrifice themselves by um, going wherever they're called to go um, to, to keep people safe and you know keep the world at peace. We had that you know their their individual personal lives were behind the commonwealth of of the world for that generation. And then we had this silent generation, um, which I'm sure many of you are part of. Um, they also went through early in their lives, Great Depression, and they learned to sacrifice themselves and you know, the greatest work ethic you know, in the work field. They, are, um, they made what, you know, what we build the United States now. You know, they built the foundation for all the industrial, you know, work field um, and trade and all that. Um, and then there's this baby boomers came after silent generation and their big issue was, you know, um, um, independence freedom from any type of authority, you know, whether it's a government authority or governing authority, military authority, or even authority at home. They were the one who wanted to, you know, be independent. They wanted to be um, free from all kinds of things that they consider as restricting their lives, you know. So that was that was the generation. I mean, they had great. Each generation had great achievement. They also had some shadows um, with um, coming with their generation's challenge. And then Gen X came along after. Um, baby boomers and Gen X was a very unique generation, right? You know, they were much more focusing on their individual needs. Their, you know, work and life balance was very important. So, you know, the silent generation and some baby boomers would work task oriented, passing their time, you know, of, at work. Um, Gen X will just leave in the middle of the project, you know, when the time comes at four o'clock, hey, I'm leaving, my work hour is done, you know. So, I mean, that generation was collaborative, they're not authoritarian at, in work, they're more um, like to work with other people and create this environment of collaboration. Um, they also had to um, deal with the conflict with the previous generation that had totally different work ethics. Um, now, the millennials and Gen X, you know, we call them all together NZ um, generation. And their generation also, you know, they, they grew up with the um, social media, you know, they have access to the in, in numerous amount of information and knowledge, and they grew up with um, the smartphone. So, you know, they're pretty much, you know, the world is in their hand, you know, their, in their culture. And with that generation, the biggest challenge, one of the biggest challenges that they are experiencing now is the concept that's totally um, overpowered by not enough. They have whatever, wherever they are and however much they achieved from the previous generation or um, among the peers, they have this constant pressure of not enough. 
They're not good enough. They're not smart enough. They're not thin enough. They're not um, outgoing enough. They're not caring for world or um, people enough. No matter how much they're investing their lives for all the good things that they're doing, they're under constant pressure of this relative speaking, not good enough or not enough. They're just feeling not enough. You know, the social media constantly present, you know, what is, um, what is ideal. And then behind that social media, they suffer from the shadow of I am not enough. So that is the challenge that our young people are facing. Maybe some of us are also facing. One of my colleagues who's now retired um, shared this story about when he was about the time to graduate from college. He knew that he wanted to commit himself to um, to God, devote his life to God, but he didn't know what God wanted from him, what, he, what God wants him to do. So he, you know, at, around the graduation time, he was really struggling. He, he had many talents. He's a great musician, you know, he obviously was a great preacher and, you know, lots of talents. But as a young person, he didn't know what to do. So he went on a prayer retreat and he's, he prayed, um, prayed and prayed and tried to get the clarity about where God is calling him to, to go. And the, the retreat was coming to an end. He got really frustrated that he's not hearing from God or getting clarity from God. So while he was walking, you know, and prayerfully, he just bluntly asked, so tell me what you want, I'll do it. And he heard the sinner voice saying, I want a relationship. I want a relationship with you. And it wasn't like, be a pastor, go to seminary and be a pastor, or pursue your music education, or you know, be, a, be a great performer that will you know, um, inspire people in the world. He was not, God was not telling him what he can do. All God was interested in was being in relationship with him. This means I want a relationship with you. Means that you are enough. You are enough to me. And let's be together. Let's have this loving, caring, mutually committed, intimate relationship. And what God is really saying is, like, you come as you are, and everything will fall into the right place. Don't worry too much about making a contract and job description with me. You just come as you are and be in relationship with me. And this relationship is not like any relationship that we experience in the world. I mean, in the world, we, if you are lucky enough, if you are fortunate and blessed enough, you experience certain very unconditional love, probably from parents, 
and you know, grandparents, aunts and uncles, or your partner, you may experience the perfect kind of committed, intimate relationship. But we're not all that perfect. And not everybody experienced that. But what you can count on in this relationship with God, as John says and as Paul says, in this relationship, the foundation is life-giving love of God. No matter where you are in life or no matter what happens in your life, if you keep that relationship strong and healthy, you will not be shaken because you know how much God loves you. And this life-giving love of God is what God is offering to all of us in this relationship. And as this is Trinity Sunday, we are reminded that God is invested and actively involved in this relationship. God is committed to this relationship. God as the creator, the father, we come from him. <laughs> you know, and at our baptism, God proclaims that you are my beloved child. And that child-parent relationship is built through our baptism. And then through Jesus Christ, we are redeemed, we are renewed, we are born again. No matter where your life has been in the past, in Christ, you are cleansed, you are acceptable, and you are loved and forgiven. And this is what God is committed to provide. And God is committed to provide the healing and restoration of wholeness and empowerment through the Holy Spirit throughout our lives. So in this relationship, you can really trust that God is committed and God is fully invested in the Trinity throughout our lives. And then that's not that's not alone. That's not all there is. There is one more benefit of being in relationship with God is God set an agent to reveal God's goodness and love to all of us. And that agent is a church. God reveals God's love through the community of faith, the church. And church has people who are in relationship with God and that extends their love to others. So as you know, Gary Chapman wrote a book called Five Love Languages. Are you familiar with that book, Five Love Languages? And in that book, um, he says that there are, we all of us have primary love languages and the secondary love language. And love is expressed in five different languages. So first, you're, if you are um, someone who gets affirmed, who gets loved, who, who feels loved by the words of affirmation. So someone's love language, I mean, that is my love language, you know. Um, I love to hear people, you know, telling me um, and affirming me, you know, what I did or how I am doing and all that. That is like, makes me feel loved. So that is, words of affirmation is one type of love language. And then there is acts of service. You know, some people love 
And some people feel loved when someone does dishes, or put out garbage, or wash the toilet. You know, um, and they feel so loved. You know, some people really do that. And you know, there's a, there's a one in my family who, who just whose love language is an acts of service, and you know, he does things. You know, he's not going to say much about I love you or all that, but he will quietly do everything that I need. And then another um, way people feel loved is quality time. Time spent with them. You know, they don't want anything else but being present with them. So, you know, whether it's a phone call or, you know, spending time together, watching a movie together or having dinner, that's their love language. And there's another type, um, it's a gift, you know, whether it's a material gift or, you know, any other types of gifts, when they receive gifts, they feel love. And then the last thing is the physical touch. So when people hold hand, give hug, or touch the shoulders, or rub their back, they feel loved. And you know, we all have our primary language and secondary language. Knowing this, I am doing premarital counseling for Robbie and Lily, and you know, that is one big chapter talking about love languages, knowing someone's love language is so important to meet their needs and feel, make them feel loved and build a good relationship. The reason why I'm saying all this is because no one can provide all five love languages to others. But there is one place that you can get all five love languages. That is the church. If your love languages, words of affirmation, you have plenty of people who can give you words of affirmation. If your language is acts of service, you have plenty of people who will do acts of service. And if your language is a quality time, you will have plenty of people who's willing to come and sit down with you. If your love language is a gift, you will have plenty of time, plenty of people in this church as well. If you are a hover, if you like to be touched, you know, you can show up and you will be hugged many times. That's how church community is to reveal the love of God. And I do think that FUMC does a good job because you all have the relationship with God and that love that you received from God overflows to share with other people. So young people and maybe some older adults may come and ask, hey, what do you offer in your church? Our answer can be, we, you know, we have a flyer, brochure, you know, here, we do this and we do that and come to this and come to that, but mainly, first thing we say is we offer a relationship with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, in which you are enough. In which you will have this committed relationship from God to offer you continued creation and redemption and restoration. And in which you have committed people who know how to love out of their love of God. And here we accept you as you are.
because you are enough as a child of God. That's the message that we need to give to the people who walk in the door and to the people who are out there longing for the answer of the question, am I not enough? There is no such thing as not enough because in God we are enough. Amen. Let's sing together the hymn number 2046, The Womb of God, Womb of Life. are made for the victims of the tornadoes and also for Brian Smith uh, for healing and comfort at the loss of his son. Let us sing together the hymn number 393, Spirit of the Living God.
let us lift up our own prayers to God in silence. Loving God, Abba, Father, we thank you for creating a new family for us in which you are the parent and we are all your children. When we cannot fully embody your love in our lives, we turn to you and Jesus for the example of unconditional love and grace. To fill our hearts and our lives with your life-giving love so that we can offer the same love to others and we can reveal the love of your kingdom to build a heavenly family. God, we remember those who sacrificed themselves to protect freedom and innocent people through their military services and we give you thanks. Help us honor their legacies and continue to work on building peace within our nation and in the world. Be with the families of those during this Memorial Day weekend and give them your peace and consolation. Creator God, we have seen many unusual weather conditions lately and the victims affected as a result. While we are not capable of preventing these events, we're capable of helping the victims in recovery and restoration. Help us to support those suffering from the outcome of these natural disasters and keep them safe and offer them hope. Help us also to do all we can to protect the earth and its environment. We also ask you to be with those who are experiencing illness, weakness, and grief in their bodies and minds and hearts and souls. And we ask you to touch them with your healing power and presence. Oh God, just as we smell the fragrance of lilacs in this season, Help us keep our church family healthy and strong so that we may always have the fragrance of your perfect love that draws people to you. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us, so now we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. of service with the presentation of tithes and offerings.
generous God, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude for all the blessings you have given to us. As we bring our offerings today, we do so with a spirit of thankfulness and joy. May these gifts be a reflection of our love for you and our desire to support the work of your kingdom. Use them to bless others, to spread your word, and to bring hope and healing to those in need. Amen. Let us sing together the hymn of dedication which is found in the bulletin insert. we may want to carry throughout the week is, is God enough? Is God enough for you and for the world? And in what way is God enough? If we can say that God is enough and the relationship God offers to us is enough, for us, we can boldly and confidently say that God is enough. So go forth in peace, knowing that God's love and God's relationship with you will be always enough to meet all your needs and give you comfort and peace and courage. May the blessing of God, of the Trinity, be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.
Thank you.